Hey there people, I am Blunty and this is the newest gaming laptop from Razer. It hangs under the name of the Razer Blade and thanks to the Aussie Razer team I had a week with it to kick it around and see if the damn thing was any good. Well firstly, as you can see, it's one of the new breed of blissfully slim gaming laptops. Razer are touting it as the world's thinnest gaming laptop in fact. After the smooth lines and minimalistic design aesthetic, the next thing that kicks in your eyeballs is the screen. It is a bit on the reflective side, but there is a good reason for that. We'll get to it in a moment. But the eyeball kicking thing about it is the crazy high resolution. On the 14 inch screen, there's 5.76 million pixels. Which is a cool way to say it, but in more practical terms, it's what they call QHD+. Plus which itself isn't really that meaningful. But what they're trying to say with the whole QHD Plus thing is that this screen is even higher resolution than a standard Quad HD screen, but it does just fall short of qualifying as a full 4K screen. Consumer 4K sits at 3840 by 2160, Quad HD sits at 2560 by 1440 and this screen sits above that but below 4K at 3200 by 1800. So yeah, packing that kind of resolution into a 14 inch laptop screen is kind of crazy insane. Utterly friggin awesome, but crazy. And the reason it's glossy instead of matte, which most gamers might prefer, well, being a Windows 8.1 rig, it packs in a multi touch screen. Which, as far as I'm concerned, on a laptop is of limited utility, but on its own merits, it is nice and responsive and reasonably resistant to finger grease, making everything look completely awful. I'm sure it'll be handy for some, but I expect many owners will simply kind of forget the damn thing is a touchscreen at all, like I did within hours, because, you know, touchscreens on laptops are kind of silly. Anyway, the long and the short of it is this. Everything looks amazeballs on this display. And if you do more than just gaming on your machine, you're going to love it for video and photo editing too. There's certainly enough grunt here for that kind of work, of course, being designed as a gaming rig. And on that note, let's see the rest of the core stats. It's throbbing along on an Intel Core i7 quad core. It's got 8 gigabytes of DDR3L 1600 megahertz RAM, and the pixel pusher inside is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 870M with 3 gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. But if all those acronyms are kind of meaningless to you, basically it's got some seriously fast guts in there. And so, real-world performance-wise, it's no slouch at all. My first go-to test for gaming rigs right now is Hitman Absolution in Ultra Settings. Mainly because it makes a good baseline, and it's the most graphically challenging game I happen to have in my personal Steam library right now, anyway. In any case, the Razer Blade cooked the Ultra Settings 1080p benchmark and did it in stride. Never dipping below 40 frames per second, cracking 60 frames per second, and averaging at just a smidge under 50 frames per second. However, keen to know what this beastie could do if asked to kick around all 5.76 million pixels of its native QHD Plus resolution, I kicked things right up to 3200 by 1800 and ran it again. And under these seriously challenging conditions this time around, at more than quadruple the resolution, it still kept at a playable pace, never dropping below 20 frames per second and hitting an average of 24. Now, yes, I know some of you out there may claim that anything below 30 frames per second is unplayable, but really it depends on the game, and I, personally, found the common cinematic standard of 24 frames per second to work quite nicely in Hitman, at least. The thing looked eye-poppingly crispy. Impossible to translate that through the medium of YouTube, of course, but take my word for it. Crispy, glorious, lovely, beautiful. But of course, in fast Twitch FPS type games, you're going to want that frame rate higher. So, in more averagely demanding games, at least by today's standards, nothing proved even a slight challenge. Two of my other favourites for testing, Serious Sam 3 and the new Rise of the Triad remake, both screamed along at frame rates reaching triple digits. Now, under more standardised benchmarking of 3D Mark, even though these scores could be a little bit wonky thanks to the graphics driver not sitting on the approved list just yet, probably because of the nutty native high resolution the screen wants, still, it scored significantly higher than the average gaming laptop rig.
Now, as far as actually using the razor blade goes, I found it to be a very pleasant experience. The ultra slim, low profile body made it very comfortable to type, work and play on. The keyboard is pretty much the standard chiclet style key tops you'll find in almost every machine out there these days. But even though the action was shallow, it was smooth, quiet and responsive. It's backlit with that typical razor green of course, and it also has razor's own slightly odd looking font on it, which I'm never sure if I quite like. And it is of course built for anti-ghosting for gaming needs. So, zero complaints to make about it really. The touchpad was nice, but for me personally it felt a bit too slick. I like just a slight texture for a bit of feel and resistance. The touchpad on my MacBook Air for instance, I consider it nearly perfect. But here it's much more glass-like. I'm not sure I could ever get used to it. However, of course, this is a gaming laptop and therefore there's a pretty high chance that it'll spend most of its useful life with a mouse dangling off one of the USB ports. In my case, just in case you were wondering, it was my ever-reliable Razer Death Adder, the Razer product that started my admiration for their gear, in fact. It's been serving me brilliantly for a couple of years now. But that's kind of drifting besides the point here, isn't it? Now, speaking of USB ports, you've got three in total, and each of them is a super speed USB 3.0 port. There's also an HDMI port. It's running to the 1.4A standard, so it supports video and audio output, which makes it really easy to hook up to your big TV and home theater for some couch time play. No screwing around with separate audio cables here. One cable is all you need. Super duper easy. And on sound, the onboard speakers are pretty decent. Plenty of volume and respectable frequency response. Again, a dedicated gamer will probably have a headset or at least a decent set of desktop speakers, but on its own rights, the razor blade puts out a nice sound. And speaking of sounds again, the fan noise when you're kicking the hell out of it is still pretty reasonable too. Loud enough that you'll certainly notice when they spin right up, but not so obnoxious that it should bother you much. There's a webcam too, oh, of course, it's about average for a webcam, it's not terrific, not awful. So the razor blade is really a nice package all up, and while this really isn't something unique or particular about the razor blade itself, this was the first time that I have personally tested a rig with Nvidia's full shadow play functionality enabled. Now for those unfamiliar, this whole shadow play thing is some nifty trickery being built into Nvidia's graphics chips that provides the ability to natively capture gameplay footage to a video file without having to resort to a third party screen capture software like Fraps for example, but it can also let you stream direct to Twitch, again without having to set up any kind of third party streaming software like XSplit or OBS or fuss about with capture cards to ease the encoding strain on the main system. It is all built right into the hardware on the chip itself and it works beautifully. And like I said, this is the first time I've been hands on with a gaming rig with the right guts to fully enable this feature set in its most complete form. So if you are, or at least aspiring to be, a Twitch streamer or a PC playing Let's Player, man, let me tell you, getting the job done has never, ever been this quick and easy. Setting it all up is literally just a couple of mouse clicks. It's brilliant. The feed you can see here on my little 11-inch MacBook Air off to the side there is Perfectly smooth, though admittedly on my crappy Australian upload speeds, the resolution does have to be kept kind of low. Still though, impressive and wonderfully simple to set up. Certainly child's play compared to getting XSplit or OBS working just right. And if you'd rather record your gameplay for editing and upload after the fact, the inbuilt recording is every bit as easy to set up and just as impressively effective. Every second, every frame perfectly captured in all the crispy glory right to an H.264 encoded file to save space and make it deadly easy to drop it right into any video editor you like. And although you're seeing this all at 25 frames per second because that's how I've edited this video you're watching on YouTube because all of the camera footage I showed you from the rest review was filmed that way. These gameplay files I recorded were actually done so at 60 frames per second without any hint of an issue at all. In fact, I can show you how smooth it all is by conforming those 60 frames per second, stretching them out into 25 frames per second for under half speed playback. Boom. <laughs> you gotta love that. So, all in all, I was deeply impressed by the Razer Blade. It was a wonderful experience end to end. The only points I wasn't filled with joy over was the too slick touchpad, we've touched on that already. But that is a very personal thing, so your opinion may vary. Some of you out there may even prefer it. 
The touchscreen functionality is a bit pointless as far as I'm concerned, and the body itself, while it feels wonderfully smooth and very pleasant to touch, it does tend to hold on to finger grease. But none of those things comes anywhere close to being a deal breaker. This thing is a completely superb rig. Terrific for gaming, fantastic screen for things in addition to gaming, like high res video and photography work. It's super slim, super easy to transport, even the power supply brick is smaller than most. Of course, here's the catch. High-end performance like this in a package this small, barely creeping over two kilos, and with that crazy high-resolution screen, well, it's not going to be bargain-priced, is it? But it is a hell of a machine, and I was a very sad blunty when I had to send the review unit back. Certainly makes my Alienware 14 inches seem like a comedy-sized slab of industrial concrete by comparison. So the new Razer Blade gets the thumbs up from me. A bit of gear that makes my eyes glow green with envy, almost as bright green as the Serpentine Razer logo on the back. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.